My name is Rigzim Dinke. I was born in Tibet. I have this shop for the last 20 years. I'm here pretty much seven days a week. It brings me joy being able to share some of the unique quality that lies in Tibetan culture and Buddhist philosophy. I love these two. Oh yeah, these are also a temple guard. They don't hang on the top of the door, but they sit on the side of the door. Uh, greeting, GM2. greeting, yeah, greetings. Yeah. Uh -huh. I started in 1994 in Olympia. Small business from my apartment, like calling friends, offering food, telling stories. That's how I started with about 100 carpets. I was able to help the same village that I lived in, in India. Then me and my wife, we moved to Seattle, and the first thing I told her, let's, let's open a small shop, and then I saw this really small, tiny place, and the window was broken, door was crooked. I said, this I can afford. <laughs> we named it Pema Karpo. It's a white lotus. If you look, all the Buddha's image, they sit on lotus throne. Lotus grow in musty water, but it does not carry that mustiness. This is called 100 Petal lotus is very, very traditional. And these are all hand woven by Tibetans in India, Nepal. I try to buy as much as possible from Tibetan uh, monasteries or Tibetan communities. So that prayer play is made by people who, what, how to read that prayer. Fair Trade is organization and they go to Nepal, India, Pakistan, uh, Thailand, and they, they produce uh, small, small things uh, that pay well to the artists. So I buy from them. Basically, buying and selling things a little bit with conscious, not necessarily gear complete on profit. So whenever I go personally, I, I buy uh, not the like massive and cheapest one. I just go uh, to particular people who are uh, who have less, who have a smaller shop, and who are older, who are disabled, I buy from them. This, this one's shop from Ludiana. I buy from those older men and women. They, they, they have the smallest shop. Again, I cleaned them up one night. They were so happy. <laughs> also a lot of art. I support Tibetan Art Institute in Dramsala which also educates a lot of uh, newly arrival Tibetans, men and women, old and young, any, anybody. These are my calligraphy. I found the richness of Tibetan writing. We have four different writing. For example, this one is a big letter. And this one, it, around high school and after high school, we write them. And this one is very fast writing. This one I always write, it's called Shempe. Shempe means benefiting other. I wrote it almost like effortless. This is from Fair Trade. A lot of times they ask me this symbolic. What is mean by this mala? Why is it power beat? So I get a chance to say, yeah, you can call power beats, but actual power is within you, I tell them. But these are stepping stones, how to find that. I bought this uh, just really cheap Indian you know, gods and goddesses poster. They were selling on the street. I could easily go to a factory and buy a lot cheaper. But I purposely bought from this woman. She had three kids running around and on, on a footpath. So I, I looked like it's not more than $300 entire if I buy all of that. So I kind of sometimes buy like that. She was so happy, she packed it. Oh, I'm going to go home and cook for the kids. Being able to live in community, practice what you believe, and small, small handicrafts like that keeps at least every day food on the table. Thank you, John. Thanks for coming here.
I appreciate it. Okay, pleasure. May all living beings have a joy and happiness and cause of happiness and cause of joy. And thinking in my mind, just like I said, intention, think this has been gone billion years, the sound. Right? And you send that kind of message. Watch City Stream Thursday nights at 7 on the Seattle Channel. Or get video on demand and podcasts anytime at seattlechannel.org.